All right, so today we are gonna talk about a super important subject if you are a married person. So today we are gonna talk about the withdrawer. So you maybe are familiar with this, maybe not. Stick with me and we'll break it down and I'll explain to you what a withdrawer is. And if you are that person, maybe a few things you could try to do better. And if you are not that person, I really want you to understand that withdrawer that you are married to. Okay, so like I said, we're talking about withdrawers. I'm coming at this from a little bit more of a clinical lens today, and I'm gonna explain what we have in therapy. There's obviously lots of different kinds of theories, and today I'm gonna talk from the aspect of what we call emotionally focused therapy. So this is a very well-researched and well-backed up type of therapy that was developed by Dr. Sue Johnson, and she's got a ton of great information and books and all sorts of things if you find it to be fitting or you like the method. Um, there's lots more that you can check out about that, but I'm gonna give just a very basic introduction on um, a little bit of the clinical side, but really I hope this is like gonna hit you in the sense of, oh my gosh, that's me, or I'm married to that person, and I'm hoping that it will help you have a better understanding of yourself or your spouse. So today I'm talking about the withdrawer. So as I said, we have in emotionally focused therapy, we have two sides of the party usually. One, a withdrawer, and the other is what we call a pursuer. So their definitions are kind of self-explanatory. The withdrawing person tends to withdraw more so in the relationship, particularly emotionally. And the pursuer is the one that's usually going after things and pursuing them emotionally and whatnot. So today I'm gonna to try to focus mostly on the withdrawer and help with that understanding. And I have another video for you that is understanding the pursuer a little bit better. So let's talk a little bit more about the attributes of a withdrawer. The withdrawer is our person that has a hard time connecting emotionally. They disconnect from emotion very easily. It's actually kind of a skill of theirs. It's, um, it's a protective measure. They do it on purpose, not because they don't want to connect with their spouse, not because they don't love their spouse or care about their spouse, but the emotional world is very scary, honestly, and unknown to them. And so they have a skill. It's something that they've worked on their whole life, most likely. They have a skill to be able to disconnect emotionally or to shut off emotionally. Now, if you're a pursuer watching this, you're probably like, yeah, that's not a good thing, <laughs> right? Um, and there's some truth to that. It's maybe not a good thing, but this is what I'm hoping to get through to you in this video is that it's maybe not a good thing, but it is such a deep-seated process for them that I'm hoping by the end of this we're gonna have a little bit more empathy for where they're coming from. So they are our thinkers. Withdrawers work way more um, confidently on their left brain than they do their right brain. So if you know, our left brain is our um, thinking process and mathematics side and all that kind of stuff. Our right brain is the more emotional, relational, side of how we operate. And so our withdrawers typically are much more comfortable and oriented in their left brain. So when it comes to a marriage, we can't avoid emotion, right? And we can't avoid um, that relationship connection. And withdrawers are not trying to avoid it necessarily. They just are not as comfortable with it in the same sense that a pursuer might be. Our withdrawers do not like to have closeness in the form of a face-to-face -face deep conversation, right? So um, my husband and I kind of joke about this all the time because I am more of the oriented of, talk to my face, I want you to look at my face, you know? And he's not as oriented that way. And it took us years to kind of figure out that that was the difference, right? And so we had to figure out there was ways for me to be connected with him more side by side or just in doing something or just being present with him. Um, and there's times when I say, I need you to look at my face. 
and he does that, right? So that is something that it's important just to identify and to recognize which one of you is which. And it doesn't mean one is right and the other is wrong. It just means you're wired different. And if you are a pursuer trying to understand your withdrawer, I want you to understand this. An intense face-to-face -face eye contact conversation feels like a lot to them. It feels like they're in a boardroom of 50 people getting interrogated or something. I don't know. Maybe that's a bad example, but it feels really, really, really intense to them. So give them a break and find other ways to have it maybe not be so intense or be so harsh because you probably don't even know how much that can feel overwhelming to them, right? So on top of that, you are probably trying to seek some closeness. You're pursuing some connection. You're pursuing some emotional bond through a face-to-face, -face, let me see your eyes type of conversation. And again, it's not that, per that withdrawers don't want to have that closeness. They just need it in a little bit of a different way. They would look for closeness in side-by-side -side thing, like fishing, paddle boarding, going for a drive and sitting side by side, or like I said, even just being present. Let's say your husband's a farmer and you can hop in the tractor and ride with him. Or let's say your wife is an artist and she's the withdrawer and you can sit with her while she paints in her studio, right? I don't know. I think you have to remember to try to find ways that it will build their energy so that way when there does need to be a face-to-face -face conversation that is a little bit harder, they might have a little bit more um, stamina for it or they might have a little bit more energy reserve to be able to get through that conversation that is really truly so hard for them. Another interesting thing to note here is that since withdrawers tend to have a hard time with making that emotional connection, especially verbally, the way that they try to get that emotional connection because they do want it, they just struggle in how to get it, the way that they try to do that often is through sex. And so if they are not talking and not engaging in these deep conversations like you might want, but then they initiate sex later, that can be really frustrating to the pursuer because they're like, you've just been avoiding me all day and now you want something. That's not cool, right? But you have to understand, slow down and think of it from this way. They feel so overwhelmed and intimidated, potentially, by these emotional conversations or emotional content or whatnot that they don't know how to go there. They don't know how to go that to that place and feel safe. It's just so vulnerable for them. And so initiating sex is a way that they do feel connected to their partner. They do feel closeness. They do feel an emotional bond. And they want that. They really do want that. It just feels safer for them to do it through sex than it does for them to do it through a deep heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Not always, but that's a very common thing for withdrawers. Think about in the midst of a really heated argument, right? Every couple has had one of those for the most part, I would think. And I've worked with plenty of couples. I'm married, I've married people all around me. And there are moments when you do not see eye to eye and it gets heated. And even in that, I don't want you to think that the withdrawer doesn't say anything and they're all quiet. Withdrawers can be full of emotion and express that emotion just like a pursuer can. But in a disagreement or an argument or fight, whatever you want to call it, a withdrawer is most likely the one to literally and physically withdraw from the conversation. So this can look like a lot of different things. They might just close their eyes and be like, I'm out. And <laughs> the pursuer can just keep going and going and going and going and the withdrawer is like doing their best to not be there. They might physically leave, right? So they might walk out and slam a door and physically withdraw or take themselves out of this conversation because they are done, right? Um, all sorts of things like that. They also might try to withdraw in ending it with their words, saying things that they know might trigger buttons or things like that. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing or that's an excuse. When we get to the pursuer video, you'll see the things that they do that's really not great either. We're not picking sides or placing blame here. 
what I want you to hear from this, as infuriating as it might be to be the pursuer and be trying so hard to fix this or being um, in the place of, I need to be heard, I want you to listen to me, I want to be validated, all of that is so important and you do need those things and go watch the pursuer video because we'll talk about that. Um, but this is for the withdrawer and what I need you to know for the withdrawer is that is it great marriage advice for them to like run out and slam the door? Absolutely not. But if that is the moment you guys are at, there needs to be a break. Absolutely, there needs to be a break. The best way to handle that break, here's your side note little tip for the day. This should be established before you're in the fight, right? But breaks are a good thing, breaks are needed at times. I always share with my clients the best way to go about that is to have a mutual respect of I need a break but the biggest part of it is if you need to walk out you can walk out but I always tell my clients even if it's the only thing that you can get out of your mouth at that time because you're so mad you say to your spouse I need to leave right now but I will be back so they might still be mad <laughs> that you're leaving because if the pursuer wants to figure it out, right? They'll, they'll stay up all night long trying to figure that out. But knowing, okay, they're coming back gives a very necessary reassurance for the pursuer and for the relationship, and right? This shutdown is not a good thing, right? It's a thing that has to be worked through. But what the pursuer needs to understand is that they are beyond max capacity at that point. They are like, they're past it. Nothing is going, is going to be able to be um, figured out at that point if they've hit their max. And um, I, think it, I think one of the hardest things about this is that it feels like an escape. It, to the pursuer, it feels like they just get to walk away or they just get to shut down and I'm left here being the only guy that wants to figure it out and it's a very typical withdrawing behavior too once the dust has settled to move on right because the dust settled and I don't want to go back to that emotional war zone so we're good to go that's also not helpful and this is where there's so much more information about how to work through this cycle right so what happens here is it's a cycle in your relationship Every relationship looks different. Every relationship has created their own cycles for good or bad, but this is a negative cycle. And in EFT, like I talked about at the beginning, there is a whole process and a way to help you understand how to work through that cycle. So, side note, if you or your spouse are looking for marriage counseling, I would highly recommend looking for um, a counselor or therapist that is either certified in EFT or they are somewhat trained in it or getting their certification in it. Um, it's just the best treatment, for lack of a better word, out there for marriage therapy. So that's a side note. Um, but it's this negative cycle that every couple struggles with that goes round and round and round. And it's not healthy to just let the dust settle and move forward. If you and your spouse are at the at the stage where these big fights keep happening and one storms out and the other just stews for weeks, you're not at the point of working out the nitty gritty yet. Right now, you, you both just have to slow down. And you also probably wanna get those explosions to get um, to not get so big, not get to the point where the withdrawer feels like they have to escape. The biggest thing I want you to take away from this, this is just scratching the surface. The biggest thing I want you to take away, whether you're the withdrawer or whether you're the pursuer, I want you to remember this. The withdrawer is not trying to avoid you. They are trying to avoid the very scary, very vulnerable, unknown territory of emotion. It is not a rejection of you. It may feel like that often, but it is truly, truly not. They just feel like they are in a battle with no weapon when it comes to the emotional side of the relationship. So they have to be given some understanding of themselves and they need to get some understanding of you. And more importantly, you two together need a better understanding of the cycle that you go through that keeps getting you back in the same place. 
So to wrap up here, if you're the withdrawer, I want you to share this video with your spouse and say, okay, this is me. I am more of a thinker. I don't like the feelings. I feel trapped when we get into these conversations and it's like unknown zone and it freaks me out and I don't know what to do and I just try to leave. I want to flee. I want to escape. And then I want to come back and I want to be close to you, but I don't know how to initiate the emotions. I don't, I don't know what's going on inside of me and then it's hard for me to know what's going inside of you, so I just avoid it right? That's super hard to say. I know that's really vulnerable, but if you feel like, yes, this makes sense and this is me and I do want to figure it out with them, share this video with them so that they can understand and vice versa. If you're the pursuer, I want you to take this to heart and slow down with your withdrawing spouse. Slow down and look at their body when you guys are starting to have um, a connection that's going to disconnect, right? Or when you're starting to have a conversation that's going awry, watch their body language and watch for them physically withdraw. So you can you can see it happen sometimes. They get really tense. They might start to get flooded with um, anger. They might be, like I said, shutting their eyes. They might even try to leave before it gets really bad. Look for all of those signs. Okay, and not because you're the boss or you're in charge, but it's a sign for you to know, oh, whoa, 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 I need to slow down. I need to take a step back. Maybe there's a different way we can talk about this. Maybe there's a question I can ask to say, how you doing where you at, you know? So again, this is for the withdrawers and for the pursuers to understand them better. Go to the pursuer video and see the flip side of it and hopefully we can figure out, you can help figure out that there is a way to create a new cycle and there is a way to change this dance that you guys keep going back and forth to. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, questions, thoughts, ideas, leave them below. Hit subscribe and share with a friend.